Uh, so the topic of uh, today, um, I wanted to do some to to do something on natural building, and there's lots and lots of stuff to say about natural building. Um, so perhaps I should have put uh, a blank <laughs> first, <laughs> just for a few words. Um, so there's lots of things to say about natural building, and uh, what I'm trying to do is to focus on key concepts, like really, really important things that. I hope will stick into your mind. Um, so um, the first thing, uh, so what would you expect me to, to, to speak about? I, I guess you already know about natural building techniques and what, what does natural building me, mean to you? Uh, uh, does it mean any material in particular or you can unmute yourself and throw <laughs> in ideas? Uh, to, to me, natural means um, something that over time will go back to the earth used using, but also comes from using resources from the earth. So from the earth to back to the earth. To the earth. Any material in particular? Uh, a clay, um, straw, um, any, yeah, anything that is as organic as, as possible. So yeah, clay really does come to mind quite, quite a bit and straw. Um, Perfect. Perfect. So yes, we we I I did prepare some slides on straw, and uh, on earth there's lots of uh, techniques of building with earth. Really, really lots of them. Um, also, often people think about um, wood when 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 we think of natural materials, and this is uh, when it comes to natural building. Uh, I don't really talk much about wood because I think it's a resource that is uh, too precious and we don't have <laughs> enough wood. I mean, we use wood for firewood, we use wood for construction in some places like you know, roofings, we can't really uh, get without it. So um, I'm not very in favor of using wood for building per se, except when really necessary, like a frame or something. Um, because, you know, I tend to see that um, you know, not only the price of wood is going higher, but also we need we we have started using smaller and smaller bits of wood, like to make uh, wood uh, briquettes for the fire stove, like to wood, um, use structural lumber for timber. Sorry, for structures like uh, pieces of timber glued together so that they can make a bigger one, <laughs> because uh, we don't have um, you know the big trees that we used to have. And anyway, a tree takes a lot of time. So uh, my favorite uh, natural building techniques are actually involve using straw um, and involve using uh, earth uh, because these are really resources which are uh, readily available. I mean, earth exists in any place. <laughs> if there is some clay content in the earth, we can use it as a building material. And also sand is a, is a key, key component. And then straw um, is, I mean, it can also be used per se or in combination with the uh, earth. Uh, no, this is just earth, like here, for instance. Uh, we could use other, other fibers as well, like hemp, uh, which is often used in hempcrete and so on. These are really um, materials which, you know, regenerate pretty quickly or, you know, don't get used uh, up so much as would be the case of wood, for instance. And um, also stone used, uh, used to be used a lot in the past, but uh, I think we, I mean, unless we, we buy an old fashioned house with stone walls, uh, we wouldn't have much access to, to a stone building because of the heaviness. Um, it, it is hard to, to move stone around because of its weight. So for me, if, if any stone structure would be built now, it will be just a question, a matter of machines and energy involved in it. So um, this is then what I what I uh, like to focus most. Uh, also, when I'm um, asked to give advice to people, I, I advise to um, concentrate mostly on earth um, and on straw. Um, I think uh, natural building is important not just because this question of energy and what you know from from the ecological point of view. Also, uh, as Wendelin said, what happens uh, after a building is gone when it gets into pieces? Where does it go to? 
uh, and how much also how much energy was Im embodied in, in it. Um, I also like to think of um, how accessible are buildings to us. And I think this is why one of the key things that to us as people involved in permaculture, uh, building ma with natural material really matters uh, because uh, it gives us power. It, it empowers us actually uh, because um, a house probably is the best, is the most expensive thing you could own. And there's lots of energy which is uh, involved in there. And usually people, when they think of a house, they think of, I can afford it or I can't afford it because of money. <laughs> uh, but uh, generally people don't know that it's very fun and really, I think affordable to, to build a house on your own. Of course, if you are in a location where where it could be possible, like uh, me in Romania and perhaps Sophie in Bulgaria, uh, we, we can easily do something in the countryside uh, by ourselves. Um, that's pretty easy. Perhaps it's less uh, accessible in, in, I don't know, more Western countries. So for this um, aspect that uh, it really puts power into our hands, um, I think natural building is very important. Um, because otherwise, uh, because of this whole concern of, on economics and on global issues, um, there's a lo lot of the techniques um, have been um, adapted or adopted by big industries. Like for instance, in fabricating like here, you know, straw panels to, to bring uh, straw bale construction to another level. And for the earth uh, um, procedures, there's actually the same thing. Um, for instance, uh, out of straw clay, for instance, several blocks can be built and, you know, involve machinery and so on. So I, I don't really like to focus so much on those aspects. I like to focus more on what we can do as humans, but you know, at human scale <laughs> for ourselves and so on, uh, as self builders. Um, and of course, any every material has its uh, characteristics, and uh, it's very important to understand that and uh, to use it appropriately. Um, and um, there are two characteristics which are, uh, well, uh, defined materials. And often you will find this dilemma, insulations versus thermal mass. Uh, these are key things, which perhaps you know, perhaps you don't. Anyway, I'll go quickly through them. Um, the, there are two strategies um, to, to address um, the thermal aspects or how, how a house be behaves um, in relation to temperature. I don't know how to, <laughs> to put this better into words. Um, so the, the thing is that, uh, well, I live in a cold climate in where for all, almost half of the year uh, in a normal house, we would light, um, we will make fire in a stove to heat ourselves in the countryside. So half of the year we would put uh, fuel when, or we would, um, you know, put, you know, consume energy to heat our homes. So this thing is very important in the whole economy of a house. Uh, and there are two strategies for, for dealing with that. Uh, one is insulation and the other one is thermal mass. So these two, um, you know, some favor one, some favor the other, but it's nice to, to integrate both. So insulation is as um, our clothes, which keep us warm. <laughs> so we can think of uh, insulation as the um, the coat uh, that, that insulates a home. And usually it's a material which has a lot of air in it, uh, like the straw. Uh, it has lots of air gaps into them. And because of that, um, air uh, temperature inside um, um, doesn't decrease uh, so rapidly in winter uh, because um, there's a whole flux. If you imagine the flux of heat going through the wall, then very little actually gets out because straw is an insulated material. And the, as the other aspect, it's the thermal mass and um, uh, thermal mass materials are very heavy, but they do not insulate well. They don't have air gaps in them, but they store heat like uh, let's say the earth or water or the oceans and so on, like they, they, they store heat. The same uh, happens with the materials inside our home. So if we have a 
a cob house or a stone house, if we make the fire uh, once inside or if we heat the house uh, really well, then the heat can get absorbed into, into the thermal mass. So then um, um, straw then has, has lots of insulation and earth and heavy material have, um, uh, have thermal mass. So some people favor one kind, um, like they are totally for straw houses and others, you know, would like to do cob houses and so on, but then what do you do uh, for the insulation aspect? And uh, I think one real cool thing is to build with soil um, in, in, for houses, mostly underground. But first and foremost is to adapt the kind of material we choose uh, in, in accordance with the structure we want. Like, for instance, the cellar uh, might be with the, uh, might, might absorb the thermal mass of, and use the thermal mass of the earth or um, an underground house like here can use the, the heat that gets stored in, in, in the ground. Um, and if we build totally above ground, then I think uh, straw beds are really the best. <laughs> so these are two things that, that need to be considered. And um, another aspect which I really um, would like to, to um, talk about I mean, this is all about, you know, materials, but uh, another key concept is um, how, we, um, how, how we capture actually all this solar heat and how uh, we can use um, our design, um, the orientation of the house and so on, where we put windows and so on in order to absorb as much as possible of uh, the sun's energy. Because actually in the end, if you think of it, any, any way of, I mean, the sun's energy is free, but any other thing which we would use to heat the house actually costs energy and money or fuel or something somewhere else. Um, so let me see. This is uh, someone asked to, mm, this is a project I, I worked on and uh, someone asked to, um, to just, do a sketch uh, or to think about um, how to how to how they their house should be so that it captures as much much sun as possible and um, as I illustrated in this uh, in this example so first and, and foremost I think of a building which is as compact as possible so it it is more closely to a sphere. So it's not an L shape or something really, really fancy. <laughs> it's compact. Um, the other thing is I, I really try to, so this is the summer, um, sun, uh, the winter sun, and this is the summer sun, like we would do on a sector map. So I, and this is um, downwards is the south and uh, north is uh, upwards. So I have really oriented uh, the house totally to the south so that all open, all windows actually open towards the south in order to capture and store uh, sun's energy as much as possible. Then I think of uh, putting all the uh, spaces which are actually lived in mostly, such as the living room, the dining, the kitchen, and upwards the, the dormitories. I put them towards the south when I, I can put windows to the exterior. And then to the back, I put uh, all these services uh, like the bathroom, the storage, uh, the stairs, um, the cellar, and so on. So everything that uh, is, is a place which is where, where, where we live for more time, for more hours, then I put it to the south where the spaces, the places can really be uh, heat by, by the solar, by the sun. Uh, and another aspect is, um, oh, and here is the, the cellar. So the cellar is totally, I thought of it totally as an underground thing. Um, so um, it is totally isolated. So it's, its purpose is to be kept cold while the house uh, in winter, we want to warm it. <laughs> Uh, I could have placed it in the basement, but these people didn't want to go more underground. They wanted something above the ground. So this is actually an, an earth burned 
partly inhale uh, cellar. And then in order to um, capture heat, uh, obviously I, I did put uh, large windows uh, on, on the south side. Um, there is a kind of uh, rule of thumb which people who are doing uh, passive solar houses uh, think of, or at least uh, it, it is something like, they say like 20% of the surface area of the room should be the surface of the windows. But here I did far more than that um, with the intention of capturing in winter as much sun as possible. Uh, but then what happens in summer? Because this is why they, they originally didn't recommend more than 20% is because in summer, the, the place would uh, tend to overheat. Um, so this is a real, really somewhere in the mountains. So heating the place was really important. So what I did think about is, um, is putting some kind of, uh, uh, as if we had some folding doors, which are on the windows actually towards the interior. And um, in summer, for instance, they, they can be closed or also in winter, when it's too cold outside or there is not sun outside, we can really fold these and close them. Um, also for, um, I also thought, uh, you know, in front of the house, there is kind of a, a pergola, uh, which also, um, I studied the sun angle um, and I make sure that uh, in winter, the sun goes all the way inside and it is blocked um, in the heat uh, of the summer. So to in, in, in both cases. Uh, and of course, the no matter what, uh, I mean, ideally the, the walls could be, let's say they might have some thermal mass. So, um, Really, I would love them to be of, of straw and plaster with clay, but then you know the the client will decide for themselves. But anyway, uh, the the floors and especially the the ground floor uh, is the main place, which uh, is the thermal mass. I mean, uh, I would recommend they do a northern floor, and then all the heat you know that uh, passes through the window gets actually stored uh, in there. And anything that is mass, like even the the smaller walls that they, they would capture the heat. Um, and another thing I did here is they wanted to do, this is a, actually kind of a greenhouse, but it's not a greenhouse. <laughs> um, it's just, um, well, it, it's as, as wide as a garden bed. And I thought of it, uh, of, you know, to be able to fold, to, to close by some folding doors or windows. And it connects um, as, a, as, a, as, I don't know, a, a, a place that gets intensely heated by, by the sun, especially in winter. And then uh, if these uh, openings are, are open, then it would heat the whole room. And of course you can close them um, and open the ones outside so that it doesn't overheat uh, in the summer. And another thing uh, which we can use to, to trap, um, um, sun's energy are trombe walls. Um, so basically on, on, any, on any southern surface that, which doesn't have windows, uh, we can put um, a kind of a, a glass surface um, and we can form a trombe wall. So a trombe wall, it means heats um, through, through a glass um, as, a window would do, but then in, just behind it, there's a wall with thermal mass, so there's no insulation on it. Uh, and the space, the place here really heats up. And if it's the case, so if there is sun outside, then uh, you can open the, uh, these uh, uh, connections to the room so the heat can get in the room. And if there is not a sunny day, uh, you can close this and uh, protect the, the heat inside. So I live in a, in a small <laughs> uh, 12 meters, square meters room, a straw bell house. And I have a really good uh, sized window, one south oriented south window. And I can say that in a good sunny day, the whole place uh, warms by the sun and there's no need for 
additional heat anymore. So uh, for this house, for instance, I thought of all these uh, strategies and so on. Uh, and another real, I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of strategies and uh, alternatives. A real cool one is uh, uh, with a house that is uh, either built underground, at least partially, or it's uh, just surrounded by a berm. Um, and it can also um, capture the sun's energy and uh, store it in the, in the whole earth all around it, underneath and in the berm. And then what is important is that upside here, it's a layer of, of insulation. It is like a, an umbrella over the whole house. And this is actually a person in Romania who has built this house out of really conventional materials. So not earth, unfortunately, but um, he could have used natural materials too, but it's I, I, I did bring the example because he really kept an account of how much he would he put on the stove to heat the house. And this is how much you would put in a conventional house. And this is how much he, he put in several successive years while he you know, updated this house uh, further. So um, he used this principle of using the thermal mass of the house. And then he also built uh, towards the exterior uh, uh, kind of a greenhouse. Um, so a space that, that can warm up in winter or can be open to the outside in summer. Um, in terms of natural building, this, uh, this uh, model uh, can be used for houses, but also it's very great for sellers. This is a friend's uh, underground cellar to which I actually <laughs> contributed for two days or something. Uh, and it's made uh, with uh, super adobe, so actually earth that it's packed into bags and pounded. Uh, so the, uh, this technique of building a house underground, um, uh, a structure underground is really good also for keeping cool because the, the temperature here are, are very close to the ground temperature. So I think, uh, you know, this is an appropriate model, appropriate, let's say, structure for an appropriate case, you know, this is better to match this as much as possible. Christina, just to say you have five minutes left. Okay, <laughs> so by now I, I think I've uh, covered all uh, the main things I wanted to, to talk about. First is uh, um, to, um, to say why we need to, why, why natural building is important to us. Firstly, for, for our resilience and for our, uh, I don't know, <laughs> um, because it's empowering to be able to, to build our own homes. Uh, then um, I talked about uh, this uh, issue of thermal mass and uh, thermal insulation and to be aware of the characteristics uh, each material has and to use it appropriately. Um, and then for uh, strategies of how to orient uh, and, you know, um, how, how to use orientation and other aspects in order to capture sun's energy as much as possible. And if I had more time, I would, um, I would have talked to you about uh, more about Earth um, because there is a, so obviously there's no time to cover each technique in particular, uh, but there are lots of cool techniques to, to build with, with Earth in lots of uh, strategies. And also we have some, some good strategies for for building with straw as well. So this would be uh, just as a as a quick uh, going through. This is uh, rammed earth. This is uh, super adobe. This is cob, and this is infill. Uh, this is uh, building walls with dry elements, uh, earth elements. Uh, this is a kind of an infill, and this is. Um, um, all kinds of techniques of building on, on a structure. Um, I, I know the, the term in French is called torchis, so I don't know if, if the, there's one in English, but probably there is, but I don't know it. Maybe it's wattle and daub, like yes. I've usually seen that with thicker things, but it's, yeah, applying yeah. it kind of. And really two great books, if you ever, I mean, anyone is interested in natural buildings, is uh, this book by 
I mean, Gernot you know, Minke is really the authority both on earth and on, and on straw building. So he has a, a, a building with earth book and a building with straw. And I think these are the coolest, <laughs> uh, also good introduction. And they also give a lot of detail on, um, you know, really how to build it. So uh, I hope this is uh, useful and uh, I don't know, <laughs> motivating enough to, to go and consider um, building uh, your own houses and or structures, um, I don't know, using natural materials. If there are any questions, I don't know if there's any time left. We have like three minutes left and then we have a break. So you can take a question and who wants can continue and who wants can go to a break as you wish, yeah. Can you repeat also, Christina, the name of the author of those books? Uh, it's uh, Gerno Minke. Uh, I'll try to put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. I hope I write it right. Aha, uh -huh. okay, great. Yeah. Uh, also, on uh, if you're interested in straw building, like in England, they have a really um, cool association, which is was initiated by Barbara Jones, and she's really the person who has brought actually straw building into Europe from the USA in I don't know how many <laughs> tens of years ago. Um, and in terms of earth building, uh, I found a really cool wealth of uh, information through the French, uh, a French building association, because. Uh, they have a very long and uh, tradition of building with raw earth and also different uh, techniques. Um, also on straw, I found lots of information in, in German. There's a whole, uh, I don't know, kind of academy, <laughs> a straw building academy, really. Uh, it's not its name exactly uh, as that, but it's a really big thing. Wonderful. Thank you, Christina. That was really great to hear. And yeah, are you trained as an architect or what's your background in this field? Yes, I, I was trained as a, an architect. I kind of gave it up to live in the mountains. Um, uh, but now that I'm starting like, you know, doing permaculture designs, I, I sometimes get into the, to the point where people would like to ask, you know, some advice on how to do their buildings. I can't uh, design them wholly myself because I don't have the right to sign, but I can uh, do something good enough so that they can go to the architect with that. And um, to be honest, uh, the, the, the case that I presented to you, uh, th those are four properties. They are friends and they are neighbors. It's a <laughs> Uh, it's a four friends neighborhood and really the, the, the house nearby, if I will show it to you, it's really a mess from the, from the point of view of how they oriented the, 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 the whole building and it's really a, a leaky, <laughs> it, it's got windows on the north, it's got windows on the west, you know, it's got the living room, you know, with three exterior sides and the dormitory, you know, it has a north window. <laughs> <laughs> and all kinds of stuff like that. Because uh, often one of the, the a major mistake that people make, and especially architects, is that they uh, think of beauty and of experience first and foremost. And they think, uh, where is the major view? Or if you know, if possible to see, I don't know, the mountain, even if you're in the bathroom. And anyway, and they think of, you know, how the place will look when we all gather and party, but they don't look. That's what happens day to day, you know, when you go and put fire into the stove. <laughs> That's what happens half of each year, you know. Um, and I, I think in other countries, you know, these things are better integrated, but, um, you know, here we are, <laughs> we're always behind. <laughs> I wouldn't like, agree I mean, with that. I think it's it's the same everywhere. The, the view is, is more important than anything else. Yeah. Every time we've, for example, when we go and look for land or a house or something, 
that's those are the kind of first things that I look at. And everyone's like, wow, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? It, I'm like, yeah, but where are you going to get the, it's right at the top of the hill. How are you going to heat it? Where are you going to get the water from? You're going to have to pump water uphill every single time. You're going to have to bring food uphill every single time. You're going to have to so much work and energy. You know, you, you've got nothing above it to capture water, to capture other energies so that you, it, nature can bring things down. But everywhere you go, it's the first thing people look at is, uh, and yeah, and big windows on the north side of a house. And then they're surprised that they're continuously trying to heat it. Yeah. Even though one really interesting technology that I've only ever seen in Denmark so far is a particular type of um, triple glazing which is kind of similar to the Trump wall in it where you have a, a double glazing, ordinary, sealed, and then you have one extra pane on the outside, which has this air vent at the bottom and at the top. So when the sun hits it, the air between the single glaze and the double glaze heats up. You can open the vent, you've got warm air coming in, even on a cold day. And, um, you know, so, so you can, it's really, and obviously you get air circulation just generally just to, so that's a really useful, but I've seen someone build a brand new house designed and then put this triple glazing on the north side <laughs> of the building. <laughs> yeah. It's like, when are you ever going to get sun on it? It's, you know, really great technology but no understanding of how to actually make use of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, the, these you see happens everywhere. But on everywhere. the other side, I'm, I'm really, I mean, I found very much inspiration in how many, you know, builders associations and, you know, uh, you know, technologies that people have devised in order to integrate natural uh, materials, you know, into current construction. And even, you know, these associations that are, seem really big and whereas here uh, there is really no I mean perhaps there is a team who is actually constructing for others but mostly um, people need to learn on themselves and try <laughs> on themselves uh, there isn't much you know many places where you can go and learn or you know as it seems you know there is in England in uh, in France and in Germany Okay, I'm going to stop the recording because officially we're five minutes into a break, as Sophie has been saying on the on the chat. So we've got five minutes left. If you want to carry on with this conversation for the next five minutes, feel <laughs> free to do so. But if you need a break, go and take it because we're going to start again in, in five. So I'm going to stop the recording now. <laughs> 